Hey guys, Greg Benz here with an overview of my favorite navigational app for the iPhone. Now I'm not talking about something you would use to drive your car like Google Maps, which is a great app, and those are certainly the types of apps I use when I'm driving. I'm talking about an app to use your iPhone to get around as a photographer when you're on foot, off-road, on weird locations, without cell signal, uh, etc. Because while Google Maps is great, it's not necessarily going to give the the ease of flexibility when you're offline. There's some limits to its offline capabilities. It doesn't have quite the range of maps. You can't record your position where you've been over time to help backtrack. Uh, you know, think about when you're off-road. Many times the trail's not very clear. There's not going to be roads in Google Maps. Uh, it can be very helpful to see a live trace of where you've been. And also you can save all your, your mapping data. So if you want to merge it with your images coming off your DSLR, if it doesn't have GPS in it, you can then add GPS data to your photos very easily. So there's a number of different reasons why you would use a, a, a third-party app to navigate with your phone. The one that I use uh, and highly recommend is called GPS Tracks. Uh, it's a modest purchase and it has an in-app purchase to get offline mapping capabilities, which is $20 a year. So as apps go a little bit pricier, but in the grand scheme of things, pretty cheap and very worthwhile. So let's jump right into the app. Um, there's just a few things I wanna point out here. This app is a complex app because it's designed for not just photographers, but the needs of pilots uh, and folks in boats and cars and cyclists. It has a ton of options. Uh, let's just go through a few because the, uh, the range of choice can be a little intimidating in this app, but when you know where to look, it's very, very simple. So uh, right across the bottom is the main navigation of this app. If you click GPS data, you get a live feed of your compass and uh, whatever information you choose. So as I spin the phone, you see a live update on the compass here, and I have these different readouts. So I can click on, for example, pressure and choose from a number of different things. So if I wanna look at you know, the, uh, the distance to my next waypoint or uh, my average speed, et cetera, uh, many different options here. So this is kind of your live cockpit view. I don't use this very much because when we jump to the main uh, module, the mapping module, it's actually available in this module as well. So looking across the top of this module is the main navigation for this. The first uh, being the start button. When you click on start, it will start to live record your position over time. So this is how you're gonna be able to generate a trace of where you've been, which is great for just kind of seeing where you spent the day, being able to backtrack your steps when you're trying to get back to the car, uh, or saving the data later to merge with your camera. So this is the number one thing I do with this app is simply just record where I am. And when you're done, you can hit stop and you get options to pause if you wanna save battery life, or perhaps you don't wanna record the time you're driving from one location to another. Uh, stop and save, which I'm just gonna um, call this, uh, demo track here. Um, so I've just saved this data or I could have discarded with the other option. So I'll show you some recorded tracks in a minute. Let's just kind of close out uh, this module. The next option here is what looks like a speedometer. When you click on it, you get that same cockpit type data we had in the first screen. So this is what I was saying. You've got the compass here and five different data points. And just like in that first screen, you can click on any of them. So for example, if I click on distance, I can then choose what I want to put in there. So perhaps I want to see my pace uh, just to get a sense of how quickly I'm walking. Whatever you want. There's many, many different options here. Uh, the next three across the top are all about waypoints uh, for loading them, creating them, saving them. I'm not going to get into that. It is a little bit complicated. I don't use it that often. Just know that they're there and extremely useful if you want to navigate by waypoint. That That's all, of course, built into this app. Looking down the right-hand side of the app, you have the obvious stuff like the ability to you know, lock in where you are in the center of the screen, plus and minus to zoom in and out. You can also do that by pinch to zoom with your fingers. But the important ones are the two on the bottom. So this, this ruler, if you click on that, is gonna give you options to measure distance or area on screen. And the one that I really use is the distance on the bottom. I have it set currently to miles. If I click on that, we could jump over to say kilometers. And then you can choose whether you want to drop multiple points or draw. So let's say that we wanted to figure out how you know, far it would take to get to the other side of the lake. Well, if I click on draw and I just click and drag with my finger, I can trace around this road. And the app is now telling me that's 6.66 kilometers or, you know, for example, it's 21,000 feet or whatever, whatever unit of measure you want. So four miles is what makes sense to me. Um, so very, very handy. 
you can get a similar look if you click on the root option and trace that out. I can't do that right now because I'm not connected to the internet. You do need the internet for that feature, but the route is very handy because when you click on it, it will automatically lock the line to the roads. So it's giving you a much more accurate measure of uh, going down a trail or with your car and, and much easier if it's a snaking path. You don't have to trace the whole path. You can just click a couple of points and be done. Uh, let's come back to distance. One last thing I wanna show. I'm gonna clear this out. If we click over to drop, instead of drawing a squiggly line, you can draw straight lines. So for example, if I wanna figure out how far is it from where I am to the other side of this lake to the south, I can simply click once where I am and once on the other side of the lake and I can see it's a quarter of a mile across the lake. So very handy distance information that you can use to figure out how long will it take you to get to your location, uh, things like trying to figure out, am I close enough to shoot the subject or what, uh, what you know, lens might I need? You know, do I want a wide angle or kind of a mid-range zoom? Or, you know, a lot of important information you can glean from that. So very, very handy. Uh, and then in the bottom right here are these layers and that's representing the maps. So this is where you choose the different map types. And as you can see, there are many, many different options within here. The one that I've been showing is called Mapbox Outdoor Maps. It's my favorite. Um, if we look at this for a second, you can see as we zoom in, and I may not be able to zoom in right here because I didn't save it offline, but you can see in some of these areas here, these are contour lines, these little circular areas. So if I had saved this offline, we'd be able to zoom in with a lot of detail to this, um, but I just didn't do that in advance. But these contour lines will show you elevation on a map. So very, very handy for figuring out you know, where's the highest point nearby? Where's the peak? How high is the peak? I even used it the other day, for example, to find out where a waterfall was. I was hiking next to a gorge and by looking at the contour lines, I could tell where the steepest drop was and I knew that's where I needed to head for the waterfall. So very important information. Also, uh, as we zoom in here, uh, sorry, I don't have it offline, but you'd be able to see things like hiking trails and other details you go in. So very useful map. Uh, it's the one that I use probably 90% of the time. The other map that I use is the Mapbox satellite maps. And we click on this, obviously it's a satellite map. Where that gets really handy, of course, is when you're out in nature, you don't have roads and other easily identifiable markers to navigate by. So being able to see trees or other detail can be very helpful for getting your orientation. Also, it can be great for scouting. Uh, for example, I uh, the other night was shooting the Aurora Borealis. I thought I had a great location. It didn't work out and I needed to find another place to go at 10 o'clock at night. And I knew I didn't have time to drive all over and I couldn't really see much anyway. Uh, looking at the satellite, I could figure out where there was a spot where the road got very close to the southern, southern edge of a lake that was a clear lake. It didn't have any algae or lily ponds or any you know scum like that. It's getting a nice reflection of the aurora. So I was able to quickly on the spot figure out where I needed to go and just drive straight there even though I had no internet and I really couldn't see much of anything because it was the middle of a very dark night. Uh, so those are the two I use, very, very handy. Uh, next up on the bottom is the waypoints module. Uh, like I said, I don't use this very much, but just know that it's there if you want to save waypoints for um, you know, areas that you visited, where you took a shot, or areas where you plan to visit. Uh, a lot of great functionality in there. Uh, you know, a couple of things to quick note here, you can put things into folders, and if you click on things like name and date up top, you can use that to sort. So if, if you get a very long list of waypoints, you can sort all this. Um, take a look at the top right with these three bars, click on that, that's where you have more options. So you can kind of play with that and get a feel for things if you want to dive into it. I'm not going to do it here. Like I said, uh, I really don't think it's necessary for uh, most photography use, but just know that it's there. The uh, last critical area is this tracks module. So when I go into this, we can see a list of all the recorded tracks I have. So for example, demo track is the one we just recorded, is 29 seconds long and distance is zero feet because I didn't move anywhere. Um, but if we go down a couple more, we have, for example, Northern Lights Lake. That's the hike I took the other night trying to shoot the Aurora. If I click on this and now on the top click on map, I can see that this is the hike that I took that particular night. Now I don't have the offline mapping data, so I cannot see the train on here. Um, if I was connected to the internet or if I downloaded the map, we would see that. You'd be able to see how I climbed up a mountain. If we zoom out, perhaps, no, we're not really going to get the detail. So, um, but the important thing to note is you can see your waypoints. So the uh, red and green there, it's kind of my, my start and stop on this particular journey. 
and you can move through time with this slider on the bottom. So if I slide to the left, I can go all the way back to the beginning, and then you can see as I'm moving forward in time, what direction was I moving, and you have the readout on the bottom showing uh, how high I was. You can see I went from you know, 1,600 feet all the way up to about 2,000 feet, and it took me you know, 2,900 feet or about half a mile to, to get there, uh, as well as my walking pace, so 21 uh, minutes per mile or about three miles per hour. So uh, a lot of great detailed data here. You can also take this data and uh, ultimately export it uh, if you want to sync it up with your, your camera files, um, which you can do on the top right here, uh, and just simply choose to export, uh, and, and then you'll send yourself a GPX file, which you can go into a program like Lightroom and sync up using the timestamp on your camera. So make sure that if you're gonna use that function that you've set the clock in your camera to match what's on your phone. Um, within this here, you can see on this screen here, it's showing kind of a plot of my pace and altitude over time, which you can scroll through. So just sort of a detailed data view. Uh, the other pieces of the, uh, the tracks here, I have waypoints up top, which are those two waypoints you saw. So if you've saved waypoints along the way or anything associated with this track, you'd be able to take a look at those particular waypoints. Uh, and then lastly on the top right are the stats. So these are kind of bulk stats, just showing me, you know, what was my average altitude or, you know, what was my total ascent? So, you know, I climbed 362 feet up um, as I did this hike. So a lot of good data in here. Um, and I do like to look back on these things and, and get a sense of where did I go on a path? Because, you know, by the time you're meandering and exploring an area, you may not know exactly where you've been. So I find these to be really helpful, even if you're not gonna sync them up later with your camera data. Now, when you're done with these, uh, both tracks and waypoints, you simply sl slide from right to left. So right to left, and you can see, you can just hit delete to wipe these out. So when you're done, uh, erase those. That's really kind of the, the basic functionality of the app. The last thing to note is settings, which when you click here, you can see is just kind of overwhelming uh, in terms of the number of different options, um, this is where you'll find the manual. Uh, so that's well worth digging into if you want to. But in terms of the options themselves, I don't think you need to change hardly anything in here. In fact, there's only two things that I'm gonna point out. Uh, scrolling down here, what's now at the top of the screen here, this GPS navigation precision. We have from nav to low. This is looking at the trade-off between battery life and GPS accuracy. I find medium works really, really well for my usage. I could probably use low just fine. Uh, but the point is, don't set it to the options far to the left unless you have uh, a battery pack with you or you're plugged into power because it will drain the battery pretty quickly on your device. Sliding over to the right is going to allow you to extend the battery life and not use the GPS as frequently. It will just sort of pulse things. So for example, low will only record a dot once every minute or medium is once every 20 seconds. And so that's going to allow you to take longer hikes without necessarily needing to bring your battery pack. Uh, and you should ex just extend the life of your battery because of course GPS does eat a lot of battery. The other option I'll mention as we look down here, it says keep tracks on map after save. Turning this on will simply keep the last track you had active on screen after you save it. So when I hit save before, it wipes that out, but with this option on, it keeps it on screen. And that just keeps you from having to go into the stored list of maps and pull up your last map. Uh, instead, just leave it on screen, which is very helpful to kind of navigate things after the fact. And that's really it. Um, like I said, there's a lot more to the app. So if you have any particular questions about it, feel free to put some comments below or send me an email with your questions and I'll be happy to get back with my thoughts on it. But overall GPS tracks, uh, I find is just incredibly helpful for scouting locations in advance, uh, scouting a plan B when you're on site, uh, getting a, a record of where you've been or being able to figure out easily how to get back to your car. There's so many ways to use this app. I uh, can't recommend it enough. So it's for me, it's a, an indispensable tool in my camera kit. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and newsletter for more photography tutorials. Thank you.